Hey, it's Dave and Cheryl. I'm Cheryl. That's Dave. Welcome to CFCO at Home Week. I don't know. What is this? Six? Seven? Five? Twenty? Six? It's been good. <laughs> Every week we've been losing track, but uh, we're very excited this week. We've had some special guests, uh, but this week here we are joined by the one and only Dan Davidson. Hey, guys. Woo. One and only. I like these oh. So these digital things give the radio people lots of time to come up with some some good ego boosting tire pumping intros when <laughs> I'm, like, I'm all in. <laughs> oh, we love it! Well, so thanks for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, yeah I mean, what else am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, what have you been up to during this uh, pandemic? Well, you know, surprisingly, I've actually been super busy. I'm producing lots, um, writing lots, and uh, just. I'm still shooting videos on my own because I have the ability to do that and coming up with content. And so, yeah, it's it's honestly, you know, in a weird way, it's kind of a bit of a cool reset for me to just sit, gather my thoughts, come up with new material and get ready for the uh, the creative boom that's going to be happening probably in September, I imagine. I have to say the video for the new song is so creative for No Last Call. Uh, you know, the green screen stuff, all that involved, uh, and the 80s video game graphics at the end. Fantastic, man. Did you do that all yourself? Yeah, well, you know, I share an office with my uh, my branding and video guy. So uh, he was there running the camera, but we just kind of like grabbed every stupid prop we could possibly find and uh, put them all in one room and just did a couple performances, dressed me up in some weird things, and then tried to put it in the computer and make sure it was funny. And, uh, you know, the thing that I find about doing all these crazy videos that I do, like, I don't know if you've seen some of the other ones, but, you know, I've been to Tokyo dressed as a John Wayne meets Elton John. I've been in a mascot costume. I've been on the set of Star Trek. Uh, so I do all these crazy things because, you know, everybody's taking themselves pretty seriously out there and doing a lot of the same kinds of things in videos. So it leaves this lane wide open for anyone who's prepared to be an idiot on the internet. This guy. <laughs> well done. So do you have a green screen at home? Like, where did you get all these props from? Did you like raid your well, garage? <laughs> yeah, we pretty much emptied out my garage. Uh, I stole some of my, my kid's bike and things like that. We had a uh, video guy brought a bunch of stuff too. Um, so yeah, we, we just kind of piled it all in. Like my studio that I have downtown Edmonton has a, a shared video floor. Like it's all for photos and videos and stuff. So yeah, I mean, it was sitting right there. It wasn't being used. It might as well put it to some some good use, if you can call it good use. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love doing those kinds of things. And I think that's a big part of what I do is just trying to express some personality and, and uh, have a little fun and, and make people laugh. So tell us a little bit about uh, the new single, uh, No Last Call. So No Last Call is a tune I've been playing for actually a little while now. And it's it's always been a favorite of a lot of the people that, that are on my, my team. Um, and it just kind of seemed right for the time. Like it feels like I'm sitting in a lawn chair in a backyard, drinking drinking a beer kind of a thing. You're staying out of the bars. You don't have to deal with all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I don't know. It just seemed right for the time. And it was fun. And it just kind of seems like a good pick me up for summer for people that are ready to get into that mindset. Very cool. So uh, do you want to play the the song for us? No last call? I do. I have a, I have a weird way I'm going to do it today. I'm going to play two guitars. And I'm going to put this one on my lap, I think. Let's see if I can manage this. Oh, God, this is already a bad idea. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be playing. <laughs> I hope you guys can see this thing in the background. I, I, put, I loaded up some backing tracks so I can kind of play along with myself. And... Let's give it a shot. Let's see if it's a total trailer. All right. Here we go. This is. Oh, here we go. No last call. Shoes, give me cut mud on the boots. Shaking them hips on the back of my truck. Little red lips saying, No last call. No alcohol. Party in the headlines where I come from. 
Shoes, give me country girls with mud on the boots. Shaking them hips on the back of my truck. Little red lips singing, no last call for alcohol. Cause we party in the headlight where I come from. The years cold, the cancer song. Every day's a Friday now where I come from. Oh, there's no last call. Ever since the day I turned 21, I got 99 problems, but a drink ain't one. So line up the shots, line up the shots, line up the shots, line up the shots, no last call for alcohol, party in the headlines where I go, the cancer's song. instruments do you play um i can i'm mostly a guitar player but i can hack my way through playing bass and drums and uh I'm, i can play keys a little bit but i would never sit down in front of a piano and play a song that's for sure <laughs> i'm wow. great at faking it though that's the key to the career <laughs> i was gonna say the the transition between the two guitars that was seamless seems like you've practiced that a couple times well you can't see below here so i completely dropped this on its head so. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised you didn't hear a boing. Whatever works. Yeah, I just uh, continue to fool you all. <laughs> Dan, you're sounding good, man. And and I know the last time you were here in Chatham, uh, you put on one heck of a show along with Brad Kessel that had people actually dancing in the aisles at one point. I think to Barn Burner. It was so good. Oh man, that was that was a lot of fun. What a beautiful place to play too. It was it was great. Like those are the kinds of towns that I really want to make like my my main priority. Because you go you go to those big cities and it's it's cool. There's lots of fans and lots of listeners and stuff, but there's also lots to do. So when you go to a place like like you know Chatham or you know Windsor or any of these places, you know London or, or maybe even smaller than that, places like you know Meaford, you get you get these audiences that are just so hungry for it and so so appreciative and it's uh it's great it just makes my job so easy i love it now before we ask you any more questions dan i just want to let everybody anybody know that is watching this live on facebook um if they have any questions for you dan uh they just have to write in the comments or questions and uh, maybe we'll ask you uh those questions a little bit a little bit later we'll see, depending on what that. comes up we'll yeah see. I, can't, I can't see them on my end so you guys will have to read them to me yeah we can do that for you um so do you enjoy playing some of these like smaller venues i know you said you're from um you're out in edmonton but do you do you make it up to southwestern ontario a lot or uh you know what i i have played there quite often um like i said not very much in chatham unfortunately but i'm hoping to get back out there uh yeah i'm, I'm from a town called st albert which is just outside of edmonton so it's a it's a ways away and uh 
it's usually this is the time where I'd normally be in from Southern Ontario, you know, do the festival circuit and try and get out there. And I think I had a, a quite a few shows down that way. I know I was supposed to be somewhere down there. I can't remember what it was. There's like a really small place, Shelburne or something like that. But I was also supposed to play like Havelock and spend some time in Toronto and I've played Sarnia, Blue Water Border Fest, and London a bunch of times. So yeah, it's it's becoming starting to feel like home out there. That's for sure. <laughs> so with everything going on, are these the kinds of things you've been doing to keep yourself busy? Because I mean, as a musician, it's it, you've got to be feeling a little antsy not being out and and playing in front of crowds. Totally, it's actually super scary. Like, the whole thing is is pretty wild. You know, like when we when we look at all of our income as Canadian country musicians, it's sometimes it's as much as like 70, 80% of our, our live performances is, is or our, our income from the year is the live performances from the summer. So uh, <clears throat> it just, it's a terrible time really, because you know, our people, like our, our crew members, our front of house guys, our band, our everything is they're not getting paid if we're not getting paid. So it's, it's a little scary, which is why actually, I, I, I don't know if you guys ended up seeing that diesel bird, uh, digital music festival that uh, sort of I was the co-creator and the host of. We raised uh, like fifty-four thousand dollars doing that um, for the Unison Benevolent Fund, which supports people in the music industry and tries to keep us all, you know, rolling and working and stuff. Yeah, I saw that you uh, you had organized. That was like near the the start of the the pandemic, right? Yeah, we were actually the first first one of the party on the the digital music festival thing, and I. I think like every, a lot of other people's is pre-recorded so so ours i'm not sure if it's still the biggest but it was it's pretty big like we had all the top country people with dallas and brett and terry clark and peniel and washboard union and you know megan patrick james barker reckless we had everybody on there and then so many people were interested in it that we had to open a second day where we had josh from mariana's trench and adam gonche from saint Sonia and three grace uh, Sean Hook, Tyler Shaw. It was, it was pretty crazy. I was actually really nervous because I had to be, I had to be you guys. I had to be the interviewers this time, and it was, uh, it was a hat I've never had to wear before. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did very, very well, and I mean, I know you've been doing a lot of these fundraising type efforts, and uh, thank you so much for helping out Chad and Kent uh, with the May sixteenth miracle, which was, I don't know if you've seen any pictures yet, Dan. If anyone shared them with you, but. It was overwhelming on Saturday, the response from the entire community, and it kind of kicked off on Friday night uh, with yourself and uh, the production that you guys put on. Oh, thanks, man. It was it was really, really exciting to be a part of that. You know, I, it was, uh, like I was telling you guys, like doing doing those kinds of things, like well, even this one, what we're doing here, it's it's nice to have uh, somebody that kind of organizes it and makes it really pro, and, and to see how Chatham, you know, responded to that, it was it was quite a big thing like a lot of people in the community were talking about it and reaching out so i haven't seen the stream yet i gotta go look it up on youtube probably when we're done here today and and make sure that uh you know didn't i didn't sound like i was faking it but <laughs> it was cool yeah, and one of my one of my good friends in the music industry uh is this guy named hoogie this is his nickname he's a guitar tech for a lot of the biggest bands out there and he's from chatham and still lives in chatham and, and he was part of putting it on so it was it was cool to to work on something together so is that how you got involved with it? Was uh, your connection with with Hoogie? Yeah, actually, yeah. So um, when I was touring my rock band way back in the day, uh, Hoogie was traveling with the Theory of the Dead Man guys, and he would always stand stand side stage and throw guitar picks at us while we were trying to concentrate. So that's how we became friends. Is abuse. <laughs> <laughs> it's typically how it goes. Wrong with that, I guess. <laughs> and then you got involved with Jason McCoy, right? Where you were part we of the. We lost uh, Dave. Did we? Poor Dave. Oh, am I gone? Did we lose am me or did we lose Dave? Oh, looks like you guys probably. are all there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't see Dave for some reason. Oh. Anyway. Uh, probably for the best. There we are. Is that my, better? Okay. Is my volume coming through okay, Cheryl? Yep, you're still doing good. Yeah, it sounded cool. good. I'm gonna, while we're waiting for a second of loading, I'm gonna check my tuning here in case I want to play you guys another song. Absolutely. Anything you'd like. There we go. Beauty. So how about, tell me about what's going on at the station. Are you guys uh you guys are doing this every Wednesday, which is really cool. Who's been on there talking to you with this whole thing? Uh so so far we've had last week we had Eric Etheridge. Oh nice. Uh we had Madeline Merlot. Uh, like right after she was on uh, Songland oh, on NBC, cool. that was really cool. Uh, but I mean, she's got her own new music out too, so that was fun to talk to her about that. Uh, yeah. Who else have we had, Dave? I'm having a 
a brain fart now. Uh, we had Jason McCoy on, and he talked about uh, the We Are uh, One uh, project. I hope it's not. I can't so, hear Dave for some reason, Cheryl. So oh. I'm not sure what's going on. You might have to translate for me. Um, well, Dave, just wanted to know, um, we had talked to Jason McCoy about the We Are One project, which you were a part of, right? Yeah. So that was that was really fun. Um, Jason was on my Dieselbird Music Festival, and uh, that was super cool. So you know, I told him, like, hey, anything you need from me, it was you know such a pleasure having you on. And he's... Canadian country music legend. So he's like, actually, yeah, I have this thing I'm doing and we've got all these great artists singing on it. So I'd love you to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, it was cool. I mean, it's there's artists from all over the world on there. People from Australia and Finland and stuff. It was so yeah, yeah, I didn't know what I was getting into, but I was really happy I did. All right, so can you see Dave now? He's just a little wheel that's spinning. So I'm, I'm oh. more, it's probably my end, maybe. I'm not sure, but you're crystal clear. So oh, which is funny that, because I live in the country. I live in the country, so I have the terrible internet, the slow internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so I mean, it's, uh, it's there's been a lot of these things going on, and um, it's kind of exciting. I just I've, I just sang on a cover song that's going to be coming out right away, and it's another one of these super group type of things. And uh, actually, I think I sang on two of them now. So you'll, you'll probably be seeing a lot of these like really creative kind of ways to get artists together and, and make a little noise in, in a bit of a different way. Can, can you tell us what they are yet? Well, it's um, my producer is managed by, it's really strange actually, my, my radio guy who calls you and bugs you to play my stuff, he manages a bunch of producers in Canada. One of them is, is Jeff Dalziel who's produced all my stuff. Another is this guy named Rob Wells who's got a lot of pop hits. Um, and so there's just tons of great people. So these producers are getting all the the artists in our circle and um so on this next song coming out you're gonna see me and a couple other guys aaron allen from ontario uh nice horse one of my favorite bands um yeah there's just it's it's just really interesting brett kissel's bass player and some of his band is in it so can't ruin the surprise but something cool is coming oh can't wait and actually we had aaron allen on he was our first guest oh, for yeah? cfco mm -hmm. at home so yeah because he grew up in chatham kent did he really lived oh, in no. london yeah okay. Yeah, he's, he's been carrying it up lately too. So uh, you know, it's it's really interesting to see. It's 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 such a strange landscape, the music industry in Canada, and things change so quickly. So it's it's always uh it's always pumps me up when you see a new artist that's starting to really make some waves and, and do some damage because it's it's an uphill battle, especially as an independent artist. It's we're competing with big budgets and and some really tight relationships. So it's uh hats off to Aaron for kicking off his career in a good way. I say, well, well that just makes. Go ahead, Dave. Dan, can you hear me now? Still can't. Can you hear Dave? I'll, I'll relate. No. To, I'll relate to <laughs> Sorry, Dave. To it's like you're, you're not even here, and it, it's kind of bugging me. I'm, bu I'm bummed out. Can't see your beautiful face. Hmm. Oh, it's you're yeah, not it's missing out on much. I think. <laughs> Dave says you're not missing out on much. No, <laughs> he just turned off the lights. That's all it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, maybe uh, Cheryl, you can ask uh, Dave, Dave Dan to play another Dave song. Saying something. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, old Dave was just talking. He was wondering if you would like to play uh, another song for us. I would, of course, love to play Dave in the Dark. Uh, another song for you guys. So, and then while you're playing, I'll try to figure out what's going on. <laughs> you know, I'm almost sure it's me, and I'm not sure why. Um, how would I play you the song that kind of got me on the radar? We were talking about new artists coming out, and so I'll play you my song when I was a new artist. If I can figure out which button starts the right song, we'll see what happens here. Here it is. Well, it might be the whiskey talking, might be the wine, but I think that I found someone I can settle down with all my life. Once been and twice shy, I've been through the worst. Now I want to make you mine. I've been wandering all along. I've been broke down. I've been stoned. Walking in circles, speaking in tongues. Laid my eyes upon you and I came undone. Would you marry me in the back? 
back 40 by the rusty truck in the maple tree. Country house and a family, we can have that beautiful life. Well, it might be the whiskey talking, might be the wine, but I think that I found someone I can settle down with. All my life, I've been running from the light of the darkness till you came around. Now I've been fed. I've been fed. Left that heartache in the past. Hold you in my arms and we'll look back and laugh. Would you marry me in the back 40 by the rusty truck in the maple tree? Country house and a family, we can have that beautiful life. Well, it might be the whiskey talking, might be the wine, but I think that I found someone I can settle down with. All my life I've been running from the light, only darkness till you came around. Now I've been fed. I've been fed. Would you marry me in the back forty by the rusty? truck in the maple tree country house and a family we can have that beautiful life well it might be the whiskey talking might be the wine but i think that i found someone i can settle down with all my life i've been running from the light for me darkness till you came around now i've been failed i've been That sounds great, man. Sounds oh, good. So yeah, it's it's fun doing these kinds of things. You know what's so weird? In this job, a lot of people are songwriters and they get to do these little acoustic things and it's really intimate and songwritery. I never get to do that kind of stuff. So doing these little streams is, is kind of fun for me. The only time I've really, I've, I've done like a couple songwriter rounds and, and I recently I did one in Nashville last year at the Bluebird, which was pretty sweet. Little moment of country music history there. Wow. That would have been amazing. It was cool. The funny thing is, though, like I had this grand expectation what the Bluebird was, but you go in there and it's just like this hepatitis -y little strip mall where you get chicken and beer and they lock you out after an hour and it's filled with Canadians. It's hilarious. Very cool. So uh, we've got a couple questions for you on uh, on Facebook here. So uh, yeah. I'll just bring those up. Uh, Marty would like to know, how are you co-writing via Zoom or Skype these days during the lockdown? You know, I, like living in Edmonton, it's not exactly the songwriting hub of the universe. So uh, I've done tons of Skype writing and FaceTime writing in the past. I don't love it because you can't you can't really jam and it's it's hard to like really get a vibe. But if I have an idea kind of flushed out, I'll, I'll do some. Like I, I haven't done any since the COVID thing started. I've been doing a lot of like work and work and work and bounce files and send it off. And then they come back and I work more on it. So it's more of that kind of thing right now. But I was actually just reaching out to a bunch of my sort of my closest songwriter friends, the people that I write with the most, trying to see if I can set something up because I'm, I feel like I've got tons of nuggets. That's my big thing as a writer. I compartmentalize. I have these little nuggets sitting on my phone and then I bring them out in, in writing sessions. But it's so it's terrible, though, because you go I go through my voice notes and there's like 50 million of them that are just me going like, <laughs> 
I have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. Yeah. Uh, and then James would like to know who would be your dream duet partner? Weird Al. Really? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Love um, it. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a dream duet partner. I don't know. Like, as far as Canadian country goes, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Jess Mosklu. She's just, she's just such a great singer and she's, you know, such a charismatic, bright, fun person. So that, that would be a lot of fun. But there's just so many great um, females in Canada. You know, like Tennille is amazing. She's got so much character. It's just, it's unbelievable how, how many talented girls we have in this country that are just crushing it, both both sides of the border. So I'd be happy with pretty much anybody from the Canadian country, you know, female artist of the year category. Now, have you written any duets, like something that you would want to uh, get someone on, male or female? Yeah, well, you know, I always, I always had this idea of doing like a, because that's usually the thing. It's like, it's a male, female thing to do a duet, but I've, I've got a couple songs of mine where I'm, I just want to get like a big gang of Canadian country musicians, whoever it is, bands, guys, girls, and uh, I think that would be kind of a fun thing. Like not not like from a charity angle, like it normally would be, but more just, you know, Dan Davidson featuring everybody would be <laughs> kind of nice. Do you think you'd be able to pull that off? Do you have the connections? Like start emailing everybody? I think so. I mean, it's sometimes a hard sell. That's the, you know, the beauty about being independent is that I don't have all the hoops to jump through and I don't have to like clear stuff with the team. But uh, a lot of the big artists do, and that's fine. It's just it's just a little harder to kind of like call them up and be like, "Hey, you want to do this? Yes, let's go." You know, it's, it doesn't really work like that <laughs> unless you're me. But and you've worked with a number of these people by the sounds of it in both the country and the rock worlds too. Yeah, you know, it's so funny the crossover. It's crazy. Like uh, when Dallas was playing in Default, I was touring in my band Tupelo Honey, and we played so many shows together for years so seeing him cross over was a, a big inspiration for me to to open up the idea of, of doing country music and actually um i called him because he was in edmonton opening for florida georgia line and he's like you know what come out and we'll just we'll hang out after the show and so i went to this after party and people were like losing their minds for dallas and and i was just seeing him like you know opening up this huge new horizon in his career and i was just kind of inspired and and uh, you know, I started thinking about it. And then when I was writing rock, I felt like I always kind of kept this this door locked, that um, it's the twang door or something. And I unlocked it, and uh, it just seemed <laughs> like maybe it's a it's a prairie thing or something. It's just everybody's got a little bit of that in them out here. And and so yeah, I mean, and I think he he was you know he was complimentary, and he was saying I think you got the right voice for it, you got the right look for it. And when you think about it, like Dan Davidson, that sounds like a pair of jeans. That that's a pretty country name. I think. <laughs> It, it does, yeah. A very comfortable pair of jeans. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't last long, though. Lots of holes. <laughs> now, have you always been influenced by country, though? Because I know, and I, I can't wait for some new ones, uh, but if you go back into the fall, you release some bluegrass covers that are amazing. Yeah, so, you know, I wish I'd gotten into bluegrass at a younger age because when I was younger, I was into, you know, more angsty kind of music because I think a lot of people are when they're guitar players. Um, so I was into like punk and metal and rock and stuff. And that's when I was going through my teenage years and uh, and country was always kind of there. Like my dad was a big fan and, and he was always more in, in the crossover world. Like he loved Lyle Lovett and like the rodeo, but he also liked some of the classic stuff like Willie and, and, and Waylon and Merle and those guys. So I always heard it and I didn't really take it seriously until I was getting into my songwriter mode as a professional in my rock days where I was like, actually, you know, there's, there's something to this, but bluegrass. Now that you know my my fiddler uh, Tyler Beckett, he's uh, from the Owen Sound area, so he lives out there, and and he's like a bluegrass champion fiddler, and so he was getting me into a lot of bluegrass stuff, and I was like, this is like the country version of punk. It it's just fast and crazy, and it's got so much energy. So I, I started getting into it, and I was like, man, we could we could really do some funny, fun kind of shareable stuff. So we did this. We did a Billie Eilish bluegrass cover. We did a Shawn Mendes one, who, which he watched it, which was really cool. And uh, then we did this Megadeth one, like a heavy metal bluegrass cover. And it blew up. Like I was the most hated man in heavy metal for like a good month. And it was <laughs> awesome. I was, I was on like the cover of Revolver and Billboard and Kerrang! and Metal Edge and all these, all these awesome magazines. And uh, yeah, the, if you read the comments on those videos, it's hilarious. Like, 
it's just amazing. <laughs> So, so you made people a little angsty then with some of them. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it's too, it's like so polarizing, right? People either think it's so interesting and hilarious and, and, and great and country musicians. Some people don't even know their covers. Real bluegrass people are like, oh, this is cool. Uh, but, <laughs> and then all the metal metal guys that are like, like the purest metal guys, it's like it's sacred ground to cover a Megadeth yeah. song. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm talking about relaunching the, the Butter Lovers maybe next month, coming up with a new idea. <laughs> I say you'll have to awesome. do it over Zoom or something or Skype. Well, I got a green, I got a green screen, so I can I can get creative. <laughs> Perfect. Well, well Dan, I can't thank wait you for to taking some time out tonight. We really oh. appreciate you taking some time out tonight, man. Like it, this has been awesome. My pleasure, guys. It's uh, it's nice to see your faces in in, uh, in real life, you know, instead of an email address. So it's anytime you guys <laughs> need, need anything, need me to pop in, just let me know, and I'm happy to do it. Awesome. And uh, next time you're back in Chatham, Kent, we're going to have to get you into the station to, to come hang out with us. Maybe I'm, perform in, in person. Deal. I'll uh, perform in, in all my butter lover glory. I'll co host. <laughs> I'm Beautiful. Hired. Yes, please do. <laughs> thanks, Dan. Perfect. Anyway, pleasure, thanks, Dan. Well, sorry, is there another question you said? Nope. I was just saying oh. thanks for, thanks for oh. joining us. We appreciate it. <laughs> Please ask me another question. No. Do you want another question? Are you avoiding something? <laughs> My pleasure, guys. It's so nice to see you. We'll chat soon.